So this is the SAP Business One user interface. And what we've done with the user interface is we've designed the software to make it as easy to use as possible, to make it simple, make it crisp and clean, so that your people actually want to use the software. What you're looking at here is what we call the desktop or the canvas. In the desktop, you'll be working with all the different screens that are available for you in SAP Business One. We've got a range of different functional screens that you'll be using. As well as that, we also have what we call um, the cockpit. So I'm going to start off by showing you exactly how that works. Within SAP Business One, there's a couple of key areas that you're going to be working with. Right now, this is the main menu. At any point in time, if you want to reclaim the space that that menu is taking up, all you need to do is you click up here on this little minimize icon, and that then maximizes the amount of desktop space that you have to work with. Why have we done that? Well, we've done that so that you can customize the entire user interface to make it as easy as possible for your people to work with. I'll give you an example. Let's say I am in the sales team of your organization. I have got a sales cockpit that's pre-built. So all I do is I go into the menu and choose the sales cockpit. I can get rid of the menu and you can see everything automatically resizes to make uh, or to take advantage of the available screen real estate. Now in my sales cockpit, I've got a dashboard which is giving me my current sales analysis. I've also got my open documents. These uh, little functional blocks here, if you like, we call those widgets. So here's my open documents widget. It shows me how many sales quotations I've got, 23, how many sales orders I've got that I'm working with, got 25 of those, 30 deliveries and so on. But you can also see that I have some common functions. So sales opportunities, sales quotations, sales orders. And I also have messages and alerts that the software is presenting to me. Now, what you can do is as a salesperson, you might say, you know what, there's only certain things that I wanna work with every single day. Now, you can get to those from the module screen here. So you can see I've just clicked on modules and then I go into sales and I can choose, for example, to do a sales quotation. And I just click here on the sales quotation function. Now, that might be a little bit more work than what your people want to do because as you're probably aware, what a lot of people like to do when they're using software is minimize the number of clicks that they have to use to get to what they want. And that's why we've got this common functions uh, option here. So you can see, here's my sales quotation. So one click just drops me into that exact same functionality. Close the sales quotation down. Now let's say there's some uh, functionality that's in my common functions here that I don't want to use. Let's say I don't ever want to access my uh, deliveries. All I need to do is I just take that click and drag it off the screen and it's now gone. If I want to add it back in very, very simply, I go up here into delivery, I click and I drag it back across here and then it's put back into my common functions again. So the idea behind the cockpit is to make things as quick and as easy as possible for your people to work with the software. You can even tailor your own cockpit with additional widgets. So you'll see here I've got my widget gallery. So I have my common functions, which is already here on my uh, cockpit. I have my open documents, which again is already here but I can also add a browser. So let's say, for example, I wanna go and create a new, um, a new cockpit. All I need to do is I go up here into tools, I go to cockpit, and I go to cockpit management. I'm just gonna move that up there. I'll create my new cockpit and I'll call it, for the sake of the exercise, Richard's cockpit. And just like the cockpit in a, an aircraft, what this is really going to help me do is going to help me make sure I stay on track, stay on course, and I'm aware of everything that's going on at, uh, around me at the time. So I'm going to update that. So now you'll see I now have this additional uh, cockpit here, which is called Richard's Cockpit. So I'll say OK to that. And when I choose Richard's Cockpit, you'll now see it's empty. So one of the things I might want to do, for example, is there is a website that I use all the time. So I can just take 
For example, this browser widget, I can drag it across here onto my cockpit. It's pre-populated with an existing uh, website, the SAP uh, website. So I can maximize that out. And there it is, there's my, uh, there's my website and I can minimize that down and you'll see that that widget automatically resizes to take up much, as much of the screen as I want. But to customize this widget, all I need to do is I click on the little spanner icon or the tool icon up in the top corner. I go and I choose settings and I can put in the URL of the website that I want to use. So it makes it very, very easy for you to customize all of those cockpits for your own organization's requirements. You can even use those cockpits to access additional functionality elsewhere. So some examples of some of those cockpits that I've already built, a little bit like your television chef, here's something I've prepared earlier. Uh, what we've got, for example, uh, in my organization that I'm working with in my demo company, we've decided that we want to focus a lot on social media. We use social media to interact with our customers. So I built a little social media cockpit here using a tool called Hootsuite. So all I do is I click on my social media link there. I'm going to get rid of, uh, get rid of the menu. And you can see it's bringing me into my social media dashboard. I can quickly and easily log in to my social media dashboard. And I'll put in my password. And I'll do a secure login. And of course, the software does have multiple layers of security in there. So you can lock down all of this different functionality if you want to. You can have total control over what customization your users have access to. Uh, you can have total control over you know, the areas of functionality that your users have access to. So it's really up to you to determine how much functionality you want to make available for each different person in the organization. So here is now my, uh, my social media dashboard, again, using Hootsuite. So what I've done is I've taken the standard SAP Business One functionality and I've extended it out with another application. Very, very quick, very, very easy. Let's go back into my cockpit. So what I've also done, for example, is uh, inside my organization, we're running Microsoft SharePoint. So I've quickly and easily used that cockpit functionality, used that browser widget, and I've created a cockpit called SharePoint. So with one click, you can see it takes me across into my SharePoint site, and any of the functionality that I've got available to me through Microsoft SharePoint, I can now access directly from inside SAP Business One. So if you have information that's being drawn from multiple sources inside your organization and you use SharePoint to publish that information out, you can utilize that. Now, interesting thing as well, if you're using Crystal Report Server, which is part of the SAP product portfolio for small and mid-sized enterprises, we even actually have a plugin for Crystal Report Server so you can access that from inside SharePoint. So what we've done with SAP Business One is we've tried to make the system as open as possible. So we're not dictating to you what applications you can and can't use together with SAP Business One. We're focusing on making sure we give you the best application for managing your overall business. And you'll see how we do that as we progress through the demonstrations. But we're also keeping it open and making it possible for you to pull in the other applications which you need to use inside your organization. So that's a little bit of a, an overview of the cockpit functionality in the user interface. So I'm just gonna dive back now into my sales cockpit and we're gonna look at some of the navigation tools that you can use to move around SAP Business One. So I'm gonna just get rid of my main menu here for a second and I'm just gonna work from inside the cockpit because this is traditionally how you will work. So I'm going to go down here to my common functions, for example, and as a salesperson, one of the things that I'm always doing is I'm always working with my business partners. So you'll see I got my business partner master information here. So one click brings up my business partner master data. Now you'll see within SAP Business One, we give you the ability to have a screen just open, uh, as you can see it here. But with any screen, if you want to take advantage of 
the full real estate that you have available on your computer monitor, all I need to do is just click on the maximize function and then that screen will take up all of the space there. So this is my business partner master data. Now this is how we manage all of the organizations that you work with inside your business. So not only do you have your customers in the business partner master data, but you also have all of your suppliers or vendors. And because with SAP Business One, customer relationship management is integrated right throughout the entire system. You also manage your leads, sales opportunities or prospects, if you like, also through the business partner master data. Why is that helpful? Well, it's helpful because once you've learned how to use this screen for one particular function, you then know how to use this screen for every other one of those functions. And that's what we've done with the user interface is we've designed it in such a way so that you don't have to relearn or learn new things every time you start doing and performing a new function inside your organization. Because let's face it, these days for many businesses, your people are multitasking. So right now you might be the salesperson, but in five minutes you might have to be the warehouse guy, go out and pick an order for a customer. So again, that's what we've done when we designed the software, we've, we've kept that in mind. So you'll see with the a standard screen in SAP Business One, we really tried to keep the screens as clean and as crisp as possible. And that's one of the things our existing customers tell us is they like what we've done with the user interface design. But there's some key things which you'll use as you work throughout the entire system. When I open up master data, by default, it assumes I want to call up an ex existing customer. Now, if I want to quickly go across and change this so I'm adding a new customer, it's very, very simple. Up here on the toolbar, you see I just have a little icon I can click, which is add. I click on that, it now turns the screen into add mode. So as I start typing information in here, it's going to create a new customer. And then if I want to go back to searching for a customer, you'll see that icon is now available up here on the toolbar, which is my find function, a pair of binoculars. I click on there, and then I've got my find functionality available. So with the find functionality, what we've done is we've given you the ability to pretty much click on any one of these fields and start searching there. But for example, if I just want to look on the customer code, all I need to do is put an asterisk because we've got wildcard searches there and I press enter and you'll see I've got my list of business partners which has come up. Now, I just select my business partner from here. If I'm going to be working with multiple business partners, for example, I can tell the system to keep uh, this lookup visible so I can quickly drop back and select another business partner from within this list. But in this case, I'm just gonna pick Earthshaker Corporation uh, and there it is. There's my business partner information uh, for this particular customer. So on the screen, you can see we've really tried to give you uh, as much information as you need to do the basic work, but you can always jump to additional information. So I've got my standard uh, data that you would expect to find. I've got company name. I can put the customer or the business partner into a group. And at any point in time, if I have the rights, if there is a new customer group, for example, all I have to do is click here on the define new option from the drop down menu. And it gives me the ability to quickly create a new customer group. So let's say I want to have a, a customer group here. And I'll say this might be associations. So all I do is put in associations and I say update and that's now in there. All right, so now if I want to, I can change Earthshaker from being what they were before now into an association. As soon as I've made a change, you'll see the screen gives me the ability then to choose the update button. So it's giving me a visual cue that I've made a change. Now, if by chance I go off the screen, after I've made a change, it is, of course, going to prompt me and ask me, do I want to save those changes that I've made? Okay, other information that's available in all of our screens that you need to be aware of. 
One of the things we've done is we've really tried to make it as easy as possible for you to get quickly to the underlying information. What do I mean by that? You'll see here, I've got a field which is showing me the account balance, a field which is showing me the deliveries, and a field which is showing me the available uh, orders that are being processed. And another one uh, called opportunities, which again, coming back to that customer relationship management, that's showing me the number of opportunities that I have in uh, the system that my sales team's working on. Anywhere where you see one of these little yellow arrows, or we call them golden arrows, wherever you see a golden arrow, that gives you the ability to link to the underlying information. So let's say, for example, I want to know, well, this $19,000 worth of orders, what exactly are those orders? One click drills me down and takes me straight into that lookup list with all of those sales orders. And again, here is a sales order. So I'm able to say, let's say an order for $12,000. I want to look at that and see some more information about that. One click on the golden arrow and it brings me straight into that sales order. So now I'm looking at the sales order and I can um, get all the information I want. I can also dive in and start making notes about that sales order and if I want to, I'm also able to um, make changes to that sales order, again, if I have the rights to do that. But I'm not gonna go into too much information here. When I show you the sales order functionality, I'm gonna show you all the additional areas that you can access from inside there. What I wanted to give you is an idea of exactly how those golden arrows work, and you can drill down as far as you want, even down to the general ledger transactions that are sitting behind this sales order. Or, if you're in the general ledger and you're doing a quick online audit, you can drill from the general ledger transaction right back to the source sales order. Once you've drilled back to that source sales order as well, there's a couple of other things you can do. For example, you'll see here that the sales order says that this sales order is based on the sales quotation number 240. Well, inside SAP Business One, Anytime you right click on a screen, you'll see we unlock additional functionality that's available to you. So this is what I mean about keeping it simple in the first screen that you get, but then being able to drill down and take advantage of a lot more of the power and flexibility and functionality that's in the software. So one of the things I can do here is I can click on this thing called a link map. Now what the link map does is it shows me graphically the relationship between all the documents in the system. So you can see that this sales order number 238 was created from this quotation number 240. So again, if I wanna go and look at that sales quotation, all I do is double click on it and there's my sales quotation. I'm even able to change the view that I get here. So I'm looking right now at what we call a document tree chain. So it shows me how one document was turned into another document and how all those documents are linked. But for example, I can choose posting details and what it will then do if that underlying information is there, it will show me the general ledger information sitting behind that. Or I can drill down and choose my items and it's now showing me all the sales items that are on that sales order. And again, very, very quickly, just double click and it takes me down to the underlying master data for that particular sales item. So the theme here, hopefully you've picked it up, the theme here is really making it easy for you to get access to the information to give you the answers you need when you need them. A Couple of other things that we can do here from within inside the user interface. You'll see I've got my account balance. Now I can drill down and view that account balance and there you can see all the transactions that make up that account balance. But I'm the kind of person who uh, likes to work with graphical information. So you'll see I've got this graph function, show graph. One click there now takes me and shows me that detailed sales analysis report by customer. And there I've got all of that information uh, shown for me in a graphical format. Let's say, for example, I want to now get that in a report. 
Well, with SAP Business One, very, very simple. If I just want to do a print preview of that, I go up here onto my toolbar and you'll see I've got a preview function. If I then want to print that document, I go up here and I click on print. I can even email the document or I can send that information into a Microsoft Excel spreadsheet very, very quickly and easily or push it out to a PDF or whatever the case may be. Right now, I'm just going to do a print preview. So I click on the preview and there you have it. There is my report. It's kind of dry, kind of boring looking. So I want to include my graph. One click, print diagram, produce it again, and you'll see there it is this time with my graph in there. Now this is a document that's been produced using what we call the print layout designer. We also have crystal reports embedded in the software. I'm going to show you a little bit more about that in one of our other demonstrations that you can navigate to through the user interface of the demonstration presentation system that, uh, that you're currently accessing this through. So um, that's that ability to generate that information and look at those graphs. A couple of other things that you need to be aware of when you're working through the user interface is that you can navigate quickly and easily through all the records just by using this function up here on the toolbar, your next record, your previous record. Now remember, I have changed this. So as soon as I go to next record, it's just reminding me, hey, you've made a change. Do you want to continue without saving? And I'm going to say yes in this particular instance. So now it moves me to my next customer and my next customer and so on. So very quick, very easy to navigate around through the system. So that's the navigation that's available to you inside SAP Business One. Some other things that you can do with the software as far as customizing the user interface. What people often tell us is that one of the biggest challenges they have when moving to a new system is that Oftentimes, they have specific ways of referring to information inside their organization. For example, you might call um, a business a customer, for example, you might call them a business partner. So what you could then say is, well, I want to change the fields on the screen that allow me um, to identify this as a business partner. Very, very simple. All you need to do if you have the rights is you hold down the control key and you double click on the field name that you want to change and then you go in and you just change that field name. So again, I'll just make that business partner and I'll say update and OK. And now you'll see that from now on, on this screen, I'm referring to that particular field by the name which I'm used to using inside my organization. Let's say, for example, we're a simple company. We don't have uh, people with you know, lots of accounting experience in the organization. So I want to change some of these names, account balance, deliveries, orders, and opportunities. So again, simple thing here. Point to the field, hold down your control key, double click, and I'm going to change this to what they owe us. And say update, and OK. So there you go, what they owe us. Very, very simple. Okay, and let's take opportunities, for example. And this is um, deals we are working on. And update that as well. So there you go, very, very simple, very, very quick. Uh, and now we're using the terminology that, you know, we use in normal business language, okay? So what do they owe us? They owe us $190,000. How many deals are we working on? Well, we're working on one. And of course, single click, I can quickly drill down and now start looking at that sales opportunity. So once we've drilled down and looked at that information, there's a range of other things that we can do. That functionality that I showed you around changing those fields, you can even apply that to these tabs. So here is a tab which is showing me all my general information, my contact people, because of course we can maintain multiple contacts inside an organization. The multiple addresses that I have for that company, I can have a bill to address, a shipping address, I can have multiple billing and shipping addresses. And then we've also provided additional integration as well through to um, you know, your web-based tools. So for example, if I wanted to show 
this particular customer's location in a web browser. So for example, um, when I click here on show location in web browser, it jumps into Google Maps for me and will bring up the uh, information about that customer's location and I can map out my directions, how to get there and so on. Now I'm gonna show you some tools a little later uh, with uh, mobility applications that run on both the iPad and the iPhone that reflect out some of that same functionality as well. So if you're on the road, if you're a salesperson on the road, you can look up that business partner information with your iPad or your iPhone, click on that same function and have it bring up for you on your mobile device all the mapping and all the directions of how to get there. But more about that later. What I also have is uh, a range of this additional information that I can record about payment terms and so on, but I'm gonna look at that in more detail when we drill down specifically on managing your customers. So that's a little bit of the user interface. Hopefully that gives you an understanding of how uh, you navigate around the system, how easy it is to customize uh, and adapt that to meet your specific business requirements. What I'm gonna do in our next demonstration is I'm gonna start looking at some of the core business processes in the software. So we're gonna look at, for example, the process around doing sales orders. So that's an overview of the user interface. Hopefully you now understand how easy it is to customize uh, the way that SAP Business One works to fit your organization.